Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're looking at The Mormons by historical researcher David Fitzgerald. This is book one of the complete Heretics Guide to Western Religion by David Fitzgerald. First thing I want to say is I don't have any problems with Mormons whatsoever. In fact, all the ones I've known I really liked. One of the things that dictates how much I like somebody is how nice they are. And all of the Mormons I've ever known have been exceptionally nice. I'm just describing this book that I read, so don't shoot the messenger. I like to read many different kinds of books, and this one just looked interesting, and it definitely was. Okay, let's get right into this. This book kind of blew my mind. We've all heard some of the things associated with the beliefs and the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or I'm just going to say LDS for short. Most of us have probably seen the South Park episode that highlights some of the more dubious claims regarding the formation of the Mormon church doctrine. None of that prepared me for what I read in this book. It's split into four main parts, plus the introduction. First, right after the introduction, is A History of the LDS. This got me hooked on the book right away. It was so good. I don't know whether it's the way the author lays it all out, or just the fact that so many startling and insane things happened in those early days. This whole first part is covering around the 1820s to the 1840s during the things that happened while the church's founder, Joseph Smith, was young up until his death and shortly after. And if you appreciate a compelling and exciting story, this is it. I'm talking about a mix between the fictions from the mind of Joseph Smith and the actual history of the events surrounding Joseph Smith. Together, they make a really great read. I mean, it's hard to believe that the things that went down surrounding this man actually happened, and that theme is persistent throughout the book. After Joseph Smith, it was the days of Brigham Young and the historical settling in Salt Lake City, which is where their headquarters is today, and the excitement does not let up after Joseph Smith is out of the picture. If anything, it gets even crazier under the rule of Brigham Young. I kept thinking... Does everybody know about all this history? So I went on YouTube and found some materials relating to some of the events described in this book, and a particular theme seemed to be present in many of them, and that is that the LDS church members and the rest of the world seem to be reading a very different historical account of all the events that maybe don't paint the church in such a good light. This is not only that there are a lot of them, but the extent to which some of these events were taken, I think of words like atrocity, massacre, abuse, racism, revenge, cult. I mean, this book was better than anything that I've seen come out of Hollywood in recent memory. The flow of the book is not disappointing as we move into part two, everything you wanted to know about Mormons and more. This is where we get into some of the things that maybe you have heard about the church and probably a lot of stuff that you didn't know about. If you bought this book thinking that you've heard some pretty out there things about the church and you want to see if they're true, as well as what other juicy things you can learn about, this is the chapter for you. This is where we go deeper into the belief system they have, as well as an issue that many religions face, which is having to try to adjust the perception of their doctrines to fit the ever-changing social landscape. In the case of this book, we're talking about treatment towards women with polygamy, treatment of blacks and Native Americans. Maybe you've heard some of the things that Smith and Young said about this, but it really is an issue for these churches because they have all these tenets that are said to be either divine revelation or translations by the prophet Joseph Smith, but as the times change, these things that were once acceptable no longer are, and this forces the church to either stick with these beliefs or change along with the times. But when this happens, it creates factions in the church between the people who are trying to stick with the modern ethics and the people who say, no, our scripture tells us, in this case, black people cannot become Mormon priests or whatever it is. And the thing about this is that moral progress tends overall to move in one direction. Yeah, there are ups and downs, but generally we're moving toward equal treatment for all. Today we see this in sexuality. Who knows what it'll be tomorrow? But 
This ever-evolving social morality is one of the biggest reasons why religions faction off into so many smaller groups that have very similar beliefs but with one or two differences. From a sociological point, it's pretty fascinating, and this is a cultural phenomenon that has hit the Mormon churches especially hard, partly because their ideas tend to take a stronger stance, but also because they've only been around for 200 years. With something like Christianity, they've had lots of time to figure out how they want to deal with this, and the populations themselves have had uh, plenty of time to reconcile these things for themselves in their family lines. Okay, so then there's part three, skeletons in the Mormon closet. Not one dull page here. It's all stuff that LDS probably wishes nobody knew about. Many of the points mentioned here conclude with the statement, the church still has not provided an official explanation for this. There's quite a few of these. And this is where we get into more of the things mentioned about the second part of the book. Problems with the Book of Mormon. There's a big section in here on fraud and crime in the church. All kinds of crazy abuse, blackmail, extortion, revenge. It feels like you're reading about the mafia or something. A particularly uh, concerning occurrence is actions that have been taken against people who speak out against the church, especially the apostates who know some of their sensitive information. It's like flat out gang behavior and it's pretty scary. Another interesting section is in this part of the book is on archaeology and how we can't seem to find anything to support some of the very big claims made by Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, such as that Native Americans are descendants from the Lamanite tribe of Israel. This is grossly offensive to the indigenous cultures of North and South America. I can't help but wonder what they might say about such a claim, but the book focuses on the lack of scientific support for the claim and many other claims. Again, this creates internal pressures that result in fractures in the church body. When this happens, do you have to decide what group you are going to agree with and just join them? What if everybody in the family has a slightly different view? One of the issues that split Mormons was their stance on polygamy. By the way, only men are allowed to take multiple wives, not the other way around. So I have to imagine that women would have been more likely to be in the abolish polygamy group. As I understand it now, very few groups actually still do polygamy. I think the church has officially denounced it. But the fourth and final section of the book is about the future of Mormonism and examines the stuff we talked about through the lens of the modern day. Society changes so fast, so it'll be interesting to see how the LDS responds to the changing social climate in the future. Of course, you don't want your group to split in half, but if people feel strongly one way or another, what can you do? Our country went through a civil war over the very same concept. The book ends by discussing what it's like for these Mormon missionaries who go out on their missions, and the author provides a few pages of tips on how to talk to them. It can really be boiled down to treat them respectfully and try to understand where they're coming from. Their beliefs and lifestyle might sound strange or oppressive to some of us, but many of these young people were born into this life and really had no other choice. It's an interesting thing. And this book was a very interesting look into the world of Mormonism. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I learned so much from this book. Most of this stuff I had no idea about, especially in the history of Mormonism. Because of the, na because of the nature of the material, this book read like a really good story. Like It was enjoyable in the same way that a fiction book is enjoyable. Some of the parts were sad. Some of it might make you recoil in horror or make you want to help the people. Some of it was just outrageous. And some of it was just downright funny. And this book was absolutely worth reading. So definitely check out The Mormons by David Fitzgerald.